try to bring you high quality educational and informational content every single day. Why do you think the price is having such an anemic time? The news story of the hour. Is this the beginning of a massive financial unraveling? We gotta add a little addendum to the show map today. So we start here on the daily. Now we've been looking at the RSI on the Bitcoin's daily chart for the last several days. Well, it's been increasing over the last 50 years since the war. The government. Hey guys, what's going on? Jeff here and welcome back to Coffee and Crypto Live. This is your week daily morning show where we bring you the latest in everything Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about the massive breakout that is likely to occur in just the next few weeks as a result of the Bitcoin having right now we have seen a large corrective movement on bitcoin and i have every reason to believe that that corrective movement is going to be coming to its ultimate conclusion at some point within at the very long term the next two months likely it will be coming to its conclusion sooner than that and we will be seeing a major rally coming in on bitcoin that will lead us well above all-time high up towards eighty thousand dollars i'm very excited to bring you today's stream because i'm also very excited about where bitcoin and its fellow altcoins have dropped to. Right now, Bitcoin is trading around $68,000, Ethereum around $3,400. And those are some great buying opportunities. We're also seeing an excellent buying opportunity on Solana, sitting at $167, down 12.16% in the last seven days. Very much looking forward to being here today, and thank you to everyone who has tuned in. Let's go ahead and read some chat. Joe Bollier is in chat. Cynthia Dizon is in chat. Philly Skills 1428. Cosmin B. Harmony Hill Homestead is in chat. Atomizer 187. Romulosi Nine Skulls is in chat. Satchet 321 is in chat. Jason Zold. Alex Nibo Schmedley B. Said, good morning, Jeb. Happy to catch you live on a day off from work. Well, happy that you could be here. El Gio said, good morning from Seattle. Brian is in chat. Joel is in chat. Love you, brother. God bless you and your family from London. God bless you as well. Stephen Alexander's in chat. Jeff Tomasek and Jeff Wilhelms are in chat. Vitality is in chat. Leandro Bautista is in chat. Shutterdown101 and Sean. Shantanu, Shantanu Sharma are in chat, KXN as well. Guys, I want to pitch something to you. I want to start bringing you guys on the stream. I want to start bringing you guys on and actually doing more or less live coaching with you guys. Now, it'd be probably five to ten minute calls at the most. Um, so the one hour calls would still be for financial coaching calls that you can find with the link in the description box down below. But I want to start bringing you guys on air and discussing your finances, discussing your investments, discussing the questions that you have for me, discussing the wisdom that hopefully I am able to impart on you. I would love to start bringing you guys on, one or two of you on every episode of Coffee and Crypto Live. Is that something that you would be interested in either one doing or in two seeing on Coffee and Crypto Live? So I'm going to write a poll right now on that because I want your input. What is your opinion on that change to CNC? We're going to try it before we actually commit to it being a part of the new structure of climate of, of coffee and crypto. But I would love to hear your input on that. I think it makes it for some really good clips. We'd be able to clip up the different calls and upload them as videos. And I think that that would be a lot of fun for you guys to see how I actually go about teaching you guys um, how to work in the cryptocurrency space. So definitely interested to hear your input on that. Shadrach Frost said, folks, please smash the like button right away. It takes a second and really helps this channel give back the love and support that Jeb brings to us on a daily basis. Thank you, friends. Thank you very much, everyone who has tuned in. Could also talk about more than just finances. Yeah, we'd mainly focus on finances, but if you had a different question for me, so for example, obviously cryptocurrency or my take on whatever, then I would be more than happy to do that. I think we're going to go in that direction, but I'd love to hear your input. And just FYI, I don't know if you can hear it. Nope, there's not enough ice anymore. This is water. Today is my first day without caffeine. Very excited about that. Um, going on the no caff route. I've done it before. I've done the whole no caffeine um, lifestyle before. It makes my mornings much easier. Uh, makes my um, just my ability to just it, 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 I, I feel better doing that. So really excited for that. Let's go ahead and jump on over to Coin Market Cap. Right now, Bitcoin is trading at 68,000. And by the way, guys, we would still go over the markets. We would still do technical analysis. We would still be um, giving you guys an update on what's going on in the news. That would probably be the first 15 to 20 minutes. Because frankly, to be honest with you, the thing that's been hard for me planning uh, coffee and crypto is that I can get through everything I need to get through in like 15 minutes. And then what we're doing right now is the back half of the show is me just talking to chat anyway. It'd be better just to have you guys call in and actually ask your questions. 
So Bitcoin is currently sitting at $68,700. Ethereum is down to $3,479. Binance is down to $580, uh, is sitting at $586. And Solana, which is the one I'm pretty excited about today, is down 12% in the last seven days, trading at $167.84. The reason I'm excited about this is because that is a much better entry on Solana than $200. It's about a 25% drop from where it had originally rallied to. And interestingly, Solana has actually dropped below its previous all-time high on market cap, I do believe. Our previous all-time our previous market cap all-time high was sitting at 75,000 uh, sorry, 75 billion 660 million. We are currently about 800 million dollars below that level, which indicates that Solana has dropped below its previous all-time high. If you were going to be getting more entries on Solana, now is your time. All right? I want you to be dollar cost averaging into cryptocurrencies as your main bet. And before you start dollar cost averaging into Solana, I want you to be dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin in an IRA that you are holding for the long run. I want that to be no more than 25% of your total retirement portfolio. And I want you to then, after you have mastered investment in the long run in the stock market and investment in the long run in Bitcoin, and then investment in the long run in maybe Ethereum, if you choose to go that route, after that is done, then and only then do we start trading altcoins for the cycle. I have Bitcoin and I have investments in our IRAs in the stock market and I've had them for a long time and they are growing nicely and that is retirement. I'm 24 years old. I'm sorry, I'm 23 years old. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm 23 years old. We are investing for retirement and that will be what 44 years from now for us. We're both 20. I'm my wife's 24, I'm 23. She's just a little bit ahead of me. Um so we're investing for retirement for the long run. And then what we're going to do is we're going to invest in Bitcoin for the long run. And then we're going to invest a great degree, a great deal less, but a degree of our investment into uh, Ethereum for the long run. Some of our Ethereum we will likely never sell. That could change. But at this point, I don't think it'll ever change. Some uh, A portion of the Ethereum that we hold will likely be held indefinitely then we buy altcoins for this cycle for the for the purpose of wealth generation during this cycle there is a very specific order that you do this the principle of financial so sovereignty dictates that we master where we are first before we move on to the next step and the thing that we need to master right now is we need to master the things in our life as we stand Financial sovereignty, I define like this, and I will, and I can reference scripture to prove that it is biblical and 100% true. We are under God, above creation, in control. That is the definition of financial sovereignty. Under God, above creation, in control. We're doing things God's way. We are over creation. We are not being ruled by banks. We are not being ruled by thieves. We are not being ruled by evil people. We are not being ruled by debt. We are not being ruled by clutter and chaos because all of those things lead to stress and take away from our ability to be fruitful. If the garden is overgrown in weeds, you don't get very many roses. So we've got to get rid of the weeds. I'm talking about debt. I'm talking about clutter. I'm talking about bad relationships. We've got to cut out the crap so that we can actually build a nice life. And then we master one thing at a time. To use the rose garden analogy, you put in the mulch bed. You put the edging in. Then you put the roses and you master a step before you move on. Your steps are this. You choose financial sovereignty. You get your expenses under control, under income, as soon as physically possible. If that is able to be done in the next 24 hours, it's done in the next 24 hours. After that, you build a budget every single month specific to that month, and you stick to it, at the, and you set out where that money is going to go at the beginning of the month. After that, you get a starter emergency fund of $2,500. From there, you are paying off all of your consumer debt. That is non-mortgage debt. From there, you're investing 15% of your income into retirement accounts for the long run. This is in the stock market, and I am totally fine with some of this being in Bitcoin and even a small degree of it being in Ethereum. From there, you're paying off your mortgage while you're investing for wealth generation, and that's where you are in uh, this cryptocurrency market. You are getting in position to be debt-free, and you are building wealth in cryptocurrency to be debt-free, and then continue building wealth so that you can do the eventual job of building wealth, which is to continue to build wealth for one, but also to be radically generous with it and enjoy an awesome life. Does that sound good or does that not sound good? I think it sounds good, but it takes longer than what most people are going to teach you. So... How does this tie into Solana? If you're investing in Solana, I want you to be on that part of the process, in that stage of the financial sovereignty way. 
you're pay, you have paid off your consumer debt. Or if you are invested in the altcoin market, then you are going to take the proceeds and pay off your consumer debt. You're working on paying off a mortgage. Okay? And you are going to make money in this cycle and you're going to use it to build wealth. If you're investing in Solana, you're looking at a pretty good opportunity too. Because the recent price action local high was $205. We're down to 167. If we jump on over to the Solana chart, you can see that that stands as a pretty sizable corrective movement of about 20%. We've seen this sell signal come into play today, which does indicate that we could see more bearish action coming on Solana. And we've also got Crypto Jeb Oscillator coming in, indicating that Solana may go lower. But the fact of the matter is, anything 20% retraced from its local high right now is probably a good bet if it's in the top 50. Solana is one of those projects. And if you're looking to increase your portfolio, uh, your position in Solana, I think right now is a great time to do so. Can it go lower? Absolutely. I could see it going down to 120. So Jeb, why would I buy now? Well, I don't want you to deploy all of your cash. If you've got $5,000 in cash, maybe you're going to put 200 bucks in Solana right now. You're not going to dump everything into it. You're going to buy now because this is a guaranteed price. And if it does go down to 125, which is a possibility, that's a local high that we set back in December, right at Christmas, actually. If we do have that occur, then you deploy more of the cash and you uh, lower your average cost basis even more, right? Simple stuff, guys. We do the same thing over and over and over again. Why? Because it works, because it's proven and because it builds wealth, period. And one of the ways we build wealth is we buy things on a discount that we reasonably expect will be more valuable in the long run. That's the definition of investing. We buy things, preferably on a discount, that we have a reasonable expectation will be more valuable in the long run. And then we figure out how much more valuable in the long run based on the risk to reward ratios. I think Solana is a good bet for this season. I would not hold it for the long run. I just uh, counseled somebody on this a couple of days ago, back on Monday, I had a coaching call and, um, uh, Kind of caution them. I'm not sure it's a good idea to invest in Solana for the long run, simply because it's very inflationary. Somebody also asked me yesterday when I mentioned this, how do I know that Solana is as inflationary as I say it is? Take a look at the market cap chart or the price action chart, then the market cap chart. Do you see how this right, um, you see how this right um, spike surge here on price action is so much smaller than market cap? The reason for that is because there was a great degree of inflation. There was a great deal of Solana that was released into the ecosystem. At $250 in price before, which was the all-time high prior, we saw a $75 billion Solana. Right now, when we're at $75 billion, give or take $500 million, bucks, we're at $167. Whereas before, if we had have had the exact same supply and this market cap, we'd be sitting at $250. That is the degree of inflation. $250 down to $167. Your $250 in Solana, in other words, that you bought three years ago is now worth $167. That's basically what we're dealing with right now. So there's a lot of inflation here, not a long-term pick yet, but you can make a lot of money with it in the next year, I think. Now, Cardano is sitting at $0.57 cents also. If you are looking to increase your, Card your Cardano uh, position, now is also a time to consider that because Cardano has gone through a pretty large corrective movement. And if we jump on over to the Cardano chart, what we're going to see is that Cardano is actually in a falling wedge right now. And we had a sell signal come into play uh, quite a while ago. A falling wedge right here, uh, downtrend right there, downtrend right here. You can see that this sell signal came in, gave us a take profit of 49 to 57 cents on Lux Algo, which was a great sell signal because that is exactly where Cardano ended up going. If you'll remember, uh, many, many moons ago, even, even before the moon that covered the sun a couple of days ago on Monday, right? We predicted that Cardano would rally up to 77 cents and then drop back to 60. That is literally exactly what happened. We rallied to 77 cents, which was a price target, and then we dropped back to 60 in the first quarter of 2024, which is what is occurring right now. We drop back down to the take profit, but now this little X came in, which indicates we might be close to the bottom. If you're looking to increase your portfolio on Cardano, this is a great place to do it because should Cardano go back to all-time high, which I, I think it will, um, that would be a uh, quite a few multiples from where we are right now. It'd be about a 7X, I want to say, about a 5X, 5, 6X from where we are right now. Um, so very excited to see what we're going to be able to do in Cardano. If you're looking to increase your position, I would say now is a good time to do so. By the way... If you make a lot of money in the cryptocurrency space and you lose it all to a hacker, then that wasn't really worth your time. In fact, it, it was it was a very poor use of your time because all we did was we made a hacker a thief rich. And I'm not in the business of making thieves rich. If you're a thief, just click off. Like I don't I don't 
You can go you can go change the way you act and quit being a jerk and then I'll help you, right? I'm not in the business of making thieves and dishonest people wealthy. I'm in the business of helping thieves and dishonest people become honest people and then I'll help them build wealth. But I know that you're not going to build true wealth that lasts unless you're honest. So I'm not in the business of helping thieves build wealth, and I don't think you're in the business of helping thieves build wealth, which is why we're sponsored by NordVPN. The reason that I love NordVPN is because it helps us stop thieves from building riches and wealth. Because what a thief does is they find you online and they realize, oh, wait a minute, here's all this information about this guy. I got his IP address. With his IP address and all this other stuff, I can I can trick him into clicking on a link. I can log his, uh, I can follow his search activity. I can do all kinds of things with this guy, the thief says. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set him up. I'm going to steal from him. All because I originally got information about him. Because I knew who he was. Because I could see his browsing history. I could see his traffic online. Because IP addresses are, by nature, public. NordVPN shrouds your IP address so that you are invisible while you browse online. And you are invisible to hackers. Does that mean you can't get hacked? No. If I'm wearing a cloaking device, I could still get shot, right? But it does make it a whole lot harder to target you. NordVPN is not going to necessarily stop you from getting hacked, but it will help to protect you from being spotted. So make sure to sign up for NordVPN by going to nordvpn.com forward slash Jeb. Thank you very much to them for sponsoring the channel. Let's read some chat here. 57% of you guys said that you would be interested in um, that, uh, that you liked that idea for Coffee and Crypto Live. Very interesting, guys. I think that you guys will like it. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Crypto destroyed my life in every way. That's why people end it. Yeah, and that's why I am so, so freaking particular about that process. You know, people give me so much hate, frustration. Is the word I was. People come at me so much for pay off your debt. Get out of your mortgage. Have an emergency fund. Invest for your retirement and don't take out of it to make investments in crypto. Before you start doing just about anything in crypto. Most of you guys are not in that position where you really ought to be working in crypto all that much. You've got other basic personal finance things that you need to be doing. I'm not saying you have to pull everything out of crypto today, but you do need to shore up those areas. You know why I'm so freaking particular about that? Because I can't tell you how many times in the last seven years I've heard the exact same thing. People ending their own lives, which is the most politically correct way to say that, that YouTube's not going to censor the channel, because it's such a horrible thing, because of crypto. Not because of crypto. Because some bad decisions were made. And I'm not trying to blame somebody that got hurt. I am so terribly sorry for these people. And man, they didn't have any education in, you, in this. And you know what happened? People sold them a bucket of lies that by buying some random crypto and taking out a second mortgage on their house, a HELOC on their house, buying crypto with credit cards. Are you kidding me? By doing this crap, they're going to get rich. They have been fed this crap, and that's what it is. It's crap. It's junk from all over the place on YouTube and TikTok. My boy Jeb is pissed off. Yeah, I'm pissed off because people are getting hurt. People have ended their own lives over this kind of stuff, man, because they've lost everything. Because they weren't taught any better. If I, walk, if I run into a 15-year-old kid and he's swearing like a sailor up and down and cursing his parents and stealing, you know, I look at him I'm like, you really need to straighten up. But you know who I look at? I look at his parents. I look at his influences. I look at the people that are beyond him that are teaching him. And we've got to start holding people culpable that are teaching others to be stupid with money. Because they get hurt. My heart breaks for these people. I made a video about um, it, about this topic, about people ending their lives in Bitcoin a long time ago. A long time ago. And it's so, so, so heartbreaking, man. An industry that has the ability to create so much wealth, if it's used correctly, can also destroy you if you don't use it right. And listen, we've all made mistakes. We can all come back from those mistakes. But for those of us like me that are in the pulpit every day and teaching, we have got to be careful. I am not going to teach you how to get rich quickly. I'm going to teach you how to get rich correctly. Believe me, I want you to be rich. And it is okay to desire to be rich. 
it is all right to desire to be rich. It is okay to want to be rich. Do I need to say that again? It is not okay to idolize the money and think it's going to save you. I also know rich people that have died thinking that they're going to take all their wealth with them. I'm not even kidding. Didn't want to part with any of it. They're on their way out. They can't take it with them. You can't idolize it. But it's not a bad thing to build wealth either. It's a good thing to build wealth. The Bible even says it's protection. It literally helps to protect you in this world. Money is a form of protection in this world. God is the ultimate form of protection, but some of that protection, he also comes through, hey, build your wealth. You know, you got money, you can hire a good attorney if somebody makes a false accusation against you. I want you to be rich. I want you to be integral. That's the way you're going to build the wealth in the first place. Um, but the point is, <clears throat> I don't want you to get, I don't, I'm sick and tired of people hurting other people because they're trying to teach them to get rich quick. There are two ways to do something in life. I teach this to my son. There are two ways to do something. You can do it right or you can do it again. Those are the only two ways to do something if you're going to do something. You can do it right or you can do it again. You can build wealth correctly or you can have to build wealth again. Pick. Building it right takes longer. Because you know what's easy? Skipping out on budgeting. You know what's easy? Skipping out on paying off debt. You know what's easy? Skipping out on paying off a mortgage. You know what's easy? Skipping off, skipping out on increasing your income through reading books and learning and increasing your knowledge. You know what's easy? Not investing for retirement. That's all easy. It's easy to not do something that's naturally going to take work. But you won't get rich. And if you do... Because we live in a society where you still can get rich even though you have no idea what you are doing because you lucked into it through the lottery or you go to an office, you get a degree, and just because you got a degree, you go and sit in an office with a thousand other people that don't know what they're doing either and you make $100,000 a year, you can still get prosperous in this world, but you won't keep it. You can do it right or you can do it again. I want you to build wealth the correct way because people mistreating wealth is one of the leading causes of People ending their lives is one of the leading causes of divorce in this country, in every country. It's one of the leading causes of stress. Mismanagement of finances is one of the worst possible curses you can put, inflict on yourselves. All at the altar of getting rich quickly. Being wealthy is a good thing to desire. Doing it the wrong way is an indication that you are idolizing it. They believe they'll be a millionaire next day morning. We yes, yesterday I asked all of you guys, you're in, you're a millionaire, or you're worth at least five hundred thousand dollars. You're on your, you're on pace to be a millionaire pretty soon. How do you get there? I heard the words discipline, persistence, consistency, patience, planning, showing up again and again and again. Those were the kind of answers we heard. Not I bought Dogecoin with a second mortgage on my house, and now I'm rich. All right, <laughs> rant over. Like I said, we need to clip this stuff. Um. Market will dip again soon. Um, hold out for that, then, uh, then buy in triple each coin and sell the money you put back in. That way you'll have your investment back for your money. Right. If Bitcoin, um, the only thing I'd say to that is it, 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 I, I would think about it in the, in the realm of, a, of an if, right? If Bitcoin or if an altcoin drops a certain, um, cer to a certain point, then you buy in. You can't be certain that the market's going to do just about anything. We can make predictions on where it's going to go, but ultimately we want to be opportunistic. I've been holding out to DCA this week. It's either Mondays or Wednesdays. Yeah. Yeah, education is the key. While while you're at it, study the history of fiat currency and the evolution of money. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm so sorry for you, by the way. Who said that? Who said that? Was it Charles? Oh, Charles, uh, Charles said, Morning, Jeb. My wife is going through some medical complications and almost took her life. Having a brother that talks about the word of God as well as crypto is helping me so greatly. God bless. I appreciate it, Charles Bradley. I am very, very excited to be here every day. Uh, we'll be praying for your wife. Richard Gilbert Navarro said, Crypto destroyed my life in every way. This is why people end their lives. Yeah, Richard, I am so sorry. I am so sorry to hear that. I am so, so sorry. Um... I, listen, I've been through a lot financially as well in my life, and it is a very, very, very hard thing to go through. Um, so we're here for you. If you need something, email us. Um, you know, there's a lot of fine people here in chat as well. Um, you can email us, supportcryptojob.com. 
and talk to you about it. Um, hope that hope that you're doing all right. I I'm, I I I don't have much information, but I'd I'd love to hear more. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at some other altcoins, and then we're going to continue on here, guys. Cardano looking to be at a pretty good entry right now, in my opinion. Um, Dot is down about five percent. Somebody just asked for Dot. Dot is down about five percent. It's sitting at eight dollars thirty-five cents. Has not rallied in a while. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Has not returned back to all-time high yet. Can you tell I'm still withdrawing from caffeine? From caffeine. Um, has not returned back to all-time high just yet. Um, although we are higher on market cap chart than we are on price chart because there's been a small degree of inflation, not a ton, not a crazy amount, nothing like Solana. Um, but I am very excited to let you know that right now does seem to be a pretty uh, good entry point on Polkadot. Dot is down about. Let's go ahead and bring it up over here on Trading View. Uh, Dot is down about 25% from its local high that was set a few weeks ago. And as we can see, yeah, about 29% actually. So if you're looking to buy some Dot, it's a good time. We're below our recent local high on Dot, which was uh, about $10. So we're below $10. Um, Dot, I think, could easily go to over $40 this bull market, if not even higher. I mean, guys, we're still in this. In some ways, it feels like we're really far into the bull market. But when you start looking at these altcoin prices, you're like, no. Alt season hasn't even started yet. It, it's, it has not even started yet. Um, many of your big altcoins like Ethereum and Solana are sitting right around all-time high levels. Ethereum's not there yet, but Solana is. Um, but even when you go down just a little bit in coin market cap, you look at um, Cardano or Dot or Chainlink or many of the others, they're nowhere near all-time high. Another one is Caspa. Caspa has gone through a pretty large correction from its all-time high that was set back in February. It's down 28%. Local uh, local drop was 38%. So if you're going to get into Caspa, not a bad time to do that either. It's already proven it can go to 19 cents. I think it could do that again. Um, there's a lot of money to be made here, guys. I just want you to do it in the right order. I want you to be out of consumer debt. I want you to... Um, I want you to be investing in the long run in retirement accounts in the stock market and also into Bitcoin. Why do I want you to do these things? Because they work. Does this mean that you're going to be gate kept out of Bitcoin and crypto? No, it just means you've got to do it in a certain order. You've got to do it in a certain order. If you are drowning in debt, you don't have money to invest. If you find five or 10 bucks here and there to invest, then great. But if you've got 20,000 or $200,000 of debt, it's not even mortgage debt. We got a bunch of car loans. Sell the stupid cars, buy some cheaper cars, and put the money in crypto. I'm all for you investing. But there's a reason why when I wrote out the six laws of money, I put pay off debt before build wealth and invest. I actually wrote them in an order. They're not just in a random order. They're written in a certain order. The six laws of money are such. Finan choose financial sovereignty. If you don't choose to be financially sovereign, you will not build wealth. You will not. No one that is out of control of anything ever grew it. When was the last time that you saw somebody that was completely out of control of something and they grew it? You know what they grew? They grew weeds. You know what they grew? They grew problems. You know what they grew? They grew stress. Why? Because this is a broken world. This is a broken freaking world. And when we are not the ones that are properly stewarding it, it tends toward disaster. In physics, that's known as entropy. In America, that's known as politics, right? If we don't take control of it, then it tends towards disaster. So the first law of money is that if you want to have more of it, you got to take control of it. That's called financial sovereignty. The second law of money is you need to have a written, excuse me, you need to live on less than you make. You need to spend less than you take in. Period. There are times here and there that that rule can be broken. That's a general. The rest of all five of the others are mandatory at all times. That is the goal. There are a few times here and there where spending more than you're making is an idea. There was a construction company. Back in 2007, had no debt, great culture, big company, general contractor, 30, 40 years old. And uh, 2008 hit, and uh, all of their competitors, because they had a lot, a lot of debt load actually, started laying off employees. Well, this company realized, well, you know, the housing crunch is going to end sometime. The, the world's not going to end just because 2008's here. This isn't going to last forever. So they ran a deficit for two years. And uh, they and the reason they ran a deficit was because they didn't lay anyone off. And then at the other side of it, they ended up having three times the market share because everybody else had to lay off two thirds of their workforce, not including the not including their laborers. So they ended up growing because they broke that law. But you still need to be careful with that, right? You, you can be strat strategic about that, but you gotta be careful with that. That's the second law. Third law: have a written plan. Again, this is all in an order. You, this is kind of the order you're gonna progress through this. It's a general order. It's not not that you have to wait until you've done one to do the other, but it's kind of a, there's a general order to this where they generally lead into each other. Um, 
Choose financial sovereignty. Live on less than you make. Have a written plan. Get out of debt is the fourth one. If you've got the written plan and you're living on less than you make, then you start getting out of debt because you've got a plan on how you're going to tackle it. Number five is you invest, is you save and invest and build wealth. Number six is you are radically generous with your money. I want you to be generous with your money at step one. From day one, I want you to be willing to be generous. But you're going to be able to be much more generous when you have wealth and you have a written plan and you're out of debt and the like. Crypto Mike said, listen, kids, this is where he is making the most sense. Yeah, you want to be rich? Do what I'm telling you to do. Just do it and then wait. Are you saying we should buy $10,000 worth of Dogecoin with a credit card? I'm saying that you should cut the credit card in half and put 1% of your portfolio in Dogecoin because it might moonshot. Who freaking knows? <laughs> <laughs> the hybrid family said we are currently trying to get rid of the van. I remember this, the van with the loan on it. See, this is why I want to bring you guys on air. You guys have some great stories. I love doing financial coaching, and I do the financial coaching behind the scenes. I'm like, listen, this stuff is gold. I want to hear you guys tell me this stuff on air. All right. We're going to read chat here for a little bit more, and then we're going to continue along here. Guys, we are still pre-having. Exactly, guys. Big rallies incoming. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. I still think it's so funny when Young said, my boy Jeb pissed. Who pissing my boy Jeb off? <laughs> people that are teaching you that you can get rich quick. People that are teaching you that, listen, I heard a story yesterday, or this morning actually, somebody inherited $50 million. You know how many people inherit $50 million? That guy. That's how many people inherit $50 million. That dude. Like he, he, Him. That's how many. One. You know how the guy that left him $50 million made it? By being an entrepreneur in like 13 different areas. Money is made. Do you, do you realize that? You make the money because you work in a godly way. You work your butt off, take care of your family, you have a plan, you're getting out of debt, all of that. That's how you succeed. It's just that simple. Where can, we buy, where can, where can you buy your book? Our book is not written yet. See, we're, here's the thing. We are very early on in this whole teaching. I've got the teaching. I'm going to spend the rest of my life organizing it into material. I'm working on some material right now to teach you guys. Um, but right now, I'm trying to live what I preach. I'm trying to make sure that I'm doing all these things. And I've got, I'm working in every direction to make sure that everything I teach you is exactly what I'm doing. Taking care of my family. Making sure that you guys are taken care of. Making sure that customer service is on point. Making sure the sponsors are happy. So we got the, the revenue going and everything. Um, making sure that... Um, you know, you guys in CT2A are taken care of. All of you guys, um, all of you guys that couldn't get into CT2A, I'm pretty sure we fixed all of it. I, we, we've cleaned up a lot of that. We're getting control over all kinds of stuff. Right now, we're getting control over a bunch of stuff. I got a fun announcement, by the way. We're not going to be here tomorrow. Uh, Coffee and Crypto will not be happening tomorrow. I'll, I'm going to try and shoot a phone video. But Coffee and Crypto is not going to be happening tomorrow. And if you want to know why, give me one in chat because I got some really exciting news for you guys. But we've been doing a lot of work to get a lot of things under control in our lives. Down to possessions. You know how much stuff we have sold? Like the last two years that my wife and I have been married, we have been consistently and constantly just getting rid of stuff. We weren't, we're not hoarders. We just... Had a giant team that, frankly, we just didn't need. We had a buttload of stuff. We've been selling stuff left, right, and center. I'm selling a truck right now. I got swings that are for sale. We're selling all kinds of stuff. We're downsizing, getting very serious. If we can't control it, we don't own it, period. If I can't find a buyer for it, then I'll give it away. I don't care. But if we can't control it, then we don't own it. Say it with me on the other side of this camera. If I can't control it, then I'm not going to own it. If I can't control this car because I can't afford to own it without a debt, I'm going to sell it, and then I'm going to buy a car that I can control. Because you know what happens when you have debt? You know what happens when you have a bunch of clutter in your garage? You have handcuffs on you. You cannot go to that area of your life without a burden on your soul. You got a mess in your garage? You can't park your car without having a stress on you every time you come home. You want to drive a car that's worth $50,000 and you make $50,000 a year. So I bet you you have a loan on it. You can't drive that car every day without worrying you're going to scratch it because you owe thirty five grand on it that you can't afford to pay back anyway. That's called stress. I want you to have peace. Yes, you can still purchase CT2A. We're working on uh, the Financial Sovereignty Academy. I'd love to see how many of you guys would be interested in the Financial Sovereignty Academy where I'm teaching all of this stuff. I'm building it now. 
Um, not sure when it's going to come out. I want it to be really, really good. But I think you guys will love it. And we're going to have some uh, private webinars where we do teachings. Now, here's the deal. I got some really exciting news. Man, I got some exciting news. Whew, it makes me want to cry. I'm going to tell you guys. Finally, finally got the clear from the missus to tell you guys. Uh, we are not going to be here tomorrow. Because, man, it's almost like, mm. I'm just so excited. I'm so excited. It, uh, like, I haven't told you yet. It's been, it's been a secret for a while. Uh, but uh, I, I think I just got to say it. We, oh, man, if I say it, then I don't get to say it again. Like, I'm so looking forward to telling you that if I tell you, I'm sorry, I'm being childish. We are not going to be here tomorrow because tomorrow we are going to an ultrasound. We're having a third child. Yes, new baby on the way. That's right. Yes, indeed. We've got a new baby on the way. Getting a divorce? What the flip? No. No, my wife and I love each other to death. No. No, 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 no. So excited. We have a new baby on the way. Very, very, very pumped for that. Very excited. Charity and uh, and uh, uh, Malachi are gonna have a little sibling. I'm not going to announce the, I'm not going to announce the name yet or the gender. But we do know those things. So very exciting, man. Very exciting. So if you guys have noticed over the last couple of months, some things are just like, man, Jeff seems a little distracted, or like he's really working on some stuff. We've been working our butt off on the home front and working our butt off on the business front, man. We've we've spent the last six months following what we teach. Let me just put it that way. We've spent the last six months really following what we teach. And you you have no idea how great it's been for our family, for our life. And then God blesses us with another child. So, so cool. We've always wanted to have four, uh, four children. That was pretty much what we decided when we got married. You know, there's four things that you need to do if you want to have a successful marriage. You need to agree on finances, in-laws, Children, how to raise them, how many you want to have them, when you're going to have them, all of that, and religion. If you agree on those four things, your divorce rate goes down below 10%. We have always very much agreed on all four of those things, which is awesome. And it's not, you know, statistics are not specifics, but um, you do want the statistics on your side. So we've always pretty much agreed on all of those things. Um, the uh, So, yeah, we, we, pretty much, we talked about before we got married, we wanted to have four to six children somewhere in there. Um, we've pretty much decided we probably want four right now because we both feel very called in the... Uh, ministry direction, like what we're doing here on YouTube and everything. And so four is a good number that we like. Um, but yeah, we got our third on the way. Super excited. Uh, I'm not going to say the due date range yet, but they are due. Um, I only say they because we haven't announced the gender to you, not because we're some kind of weird nonsense to think there's not a gender. No, there is a gender. That's the way that works. Um, if you don't like that, I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. That's just a fact. Um, we will, um, uh, we will, uh, they will be born this year. Mean Beam Okerlund said, congrats, Jeb and Sarah. Uh, hybrid family. Everybody in chat is giving so many congratulations. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. So blessed to have the children we have. So very thankful. Make sure you screen your callers before you put them on air, and don't forget to give them any kind of disclaimers. Also, rules of rules on engagement with you. Yep. Twins, it's not a it's not a they or them, it's an it's a he or she. He or she. Maybe I'll just say he or she. I don't want somebody thinking that we're some kind of weird nonsense. Um uh, yes, it is uh it is not twins, it is a single. It is a it, it he or she <laughs> is a is a single baby. Salam said cancel him. Go ahead and try. I don't know what you're gonna cancel me for. You're probably being sarcastic. I can't tell. <laughs> so yes, we're not going to be here today, tomorrow because we have an ultrasound appointment and the only time that they could schedule it was during uh, about, about 10.30 actually. So sorry, but <laughs> won't be here. I'm going to try and make a uh, shoot a phone video for that time though. But we will be back on Monday. Before you wrap out, can you touch on the coins that we should be ready to part with during this cycle? Is it possible this cycle will last 12 months? want to lessen the tax burden if held less than a year. So this is why I was encouraging everybody to be buying six months ago. I want you to get long-term capital gains taxes. Um, you can't make your sell decision based off of that. You can't. You, it's a bad idea. And the reason it's a bad idea is because what is going to cost you more is not selling the thing at the top at all and then it going right back to where you bought it. And then you missed out on all of your gains. Remember, the capital gains taxes is levied on the gains. It's in the name, not the capital, not the total cost of capital, not how much you put in, plus the gains, but just the gains. It's levied on the gains. 
So if you make a if you make three hundred percent, I want you to lock that in, even if you pay short term capital gains taxes, because that's a guaranteed money. If you hold on to it, saying, "Oh man, I just got to wait two more months and I'll get long term capital gains taxes." And then it goes back to where you bought it. You lost 300%. And sure, you would have paid, you know, a quarter of that in taxes or whatever your tax rate is. But you still would have had the 75%. I don't want you to lose money because you're waiting on um, the 12-month mark to come up. I want you to start selling 1% a week whenever you feel that it is time. If it feels in your spirit, man, I've been watching this chart. I've done the analysis. I have done the Fibonacci retracements. It's a 1.618, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all these different things. If you've done the analysis, you know the coin. You say, man, it, it really feels like it's time. Start selling at 1% a week. And then if it, and then based on your analysis, if in your judgment, you are ready to say, all right, we're going to do 2% a week. Then we're going to do 2% a week. If, we're, if it's in your judgment, you're ready to say, I think we should do 5% a week. Then we'll do 5% a week. I have not started that process yet on our coins. Um... But I would um, highly recommend that when we get there. We're not there yet. Blessed is the man with a quiver full, Hispanics said in chat. That is exactly what the book of Proverbs says. We told somebody we were pregnant yesterday, and I told them the exact same quote. I love that. They say how cute our kids are. I say, yeah, well, blessed is the man that has a quiver full of them. That's right. Love my children. They are awesome. They've got attitudes. They've got a little bit of me and their mama in them. <laughs> <laughs> but they are awesome. They are great kids. I love them. All right. <clears throat> Praise Yeshua. Absolutely. Hi from Bangkok, Thailand. Jeb, hello to you. Choose wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom with all that getting, get understanding. Says the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all that getting good understanding. Did, can I tell you something? Wisdom is the greatest virtue in the entire universe. There is no greater virtue than wisdom. Wisdom is a virtue. Did you know that? It is a virtue to be wise. It is not virtuous to be foolish. It is even the thought of sin. Or excuse me, even the thought of foolishness. Even the planning of foolishness is sin. No, it is a virtue to be wise. And so we must choose to seek wisdom. We can do it. You can do it. You think you're a fool. You don't have to stay that way. You might be. We've all been fools. You don't have to stay that way. We can choose to search after wisdom, to gain in our knowledge and our understanding and our, uh, our wisdom and wise actions. I will teach you wisdom. If you will listen to it, you will succeed. If you don't, you will fail. It is that simple. I'm not going to make it any more complicated for you than I need to be. If you follow the wisdom that I am teaching you, and you do it, you will succeed if you put the work in, notwithstanding some kind of terrible travesty, like a health crisis or whatever. If you do what I'm teaching you, you're going to succeed. If you don't do what I teach you, you're most likely to fail. So please, follow the laws of money, follow the financial sovereignty way, and get control over your life. Look in every area of your life and say, am I the master of this area of my life or not? And should I be? Should I be the master of this area? And am I? Should I be the master of my finances? Should I be the master of my finances? If I am, then I need to get out of debt. I need to have a budget. I need to build wealth. Should I be a master of this garage? Should I be a master of this bedroom? Am I? Is it a total freaking dumpster fire? Or does it actually have an organizational system? Should I be the master of my relationships? Where I am, I am stewarding them right, uh, correctly, or not. You should be. You should be a master of yourself and say, hey, I want to spend time with this person. So I'm going to control uh, what I can do about this. I'm going to say, look, I want to spend time with you. Maybe I need to apologize to you. Or am I just letting it deteriorate? Pay close attention to, to the life around you and whether you are the one that should be in control. And if you are not, and you're supposed to be, then you need to change that, and you need to steward it God's way. It's not just about control. Adolf Hitler had control. He's a terrible human being. We've got to have control, and we've got to do it God's way with meekness, which is humility and kindness and authority, but gentleness and compassion and love. Hope you've enjoyed today's stream. Today's stream is also brought to you in part by Blowfin. If you guys are interested, you can find a link for Blowfin with the link in the description box down below and get access to over 300 trading pairs 
and get access to copy trading, which is a great way to get your feet wet in trading if you are at that point in the process. If you're ready to start copy trading, then it's a good place to go. So make sure to check out Blowfilm. It's a link in the description box down below. And uh, I also want to remind every one of you, always remember that all success in life begins and is completed with a personal and daily walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you have enjoyed today's stream. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned. we got a lot of more, a lot of new content coming. I've, I'm growing a lot. My life's growing a lot. Obviously, our family's growing a lot. Um, the ministry that we have here is growing a lot. Every single last one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, I got a real good...